Hi everyone, today I thought I'd do a quick drawing of a cow's head using watercolour pens and unlike normal where I'm using the mixed media paper, this week I'm actually using some watercolour paper which is obviously appropriate but I also thought I'd just give it a try. It's been a while since I've, I've used it. So nice to experiment with different materials from time to time. And another thing that's unusual is I'm actually using a black watercolour marker. I think this is black. Yeah, ivory black this is. Um, and black is not a colour or a tone that I normally, normally work in. So it's been a while also since I've, I've done just a monochrome drawing. So I thought it would make a nice change just to keep everything really simple. And dispense with colour. We may, we may put some colour in a little bit later. Let's see how things go. But initially at least. Let's just work with line and with tone. So having loosely depicted the outline of this cow or this cow's head, I'm now going back round and just making some adjustments here and there to to make sure the proportions are reasonably correct. And now with a clean but wet brush just going to soften and move around the paint a little soften some of the lines and by moving around the paint a little bit and I can introduce texture and extra little lines there on the top of the head really very quickly But keeping in mind that, you know, there are highlights here. So I want to leave some areas untouched by, by the paint. So that's worked reasonably well, so I'm going to let that dry and then come back in again with the watercolour pen in just a little bit. So I actually ended up just leaving this to dry for just a few seconds. Didn't wait too long. Partly because I'm a bit impatient, but also uh, it did seem to dry pretty quickly. So that's good. But of course the layer of paint here is in incredibly thin, so doesn't take long for the water to evaporate.
So the trick now is to try and enhance what we've got already by adding more detail and structure and description where necessary, but we don't want to lose some of the stuff which has worked okay already. So once again, coming in with the with the flat brush, I can soften some of those areas. Then having done that, I'm actually going to introduce a little bit of purple. So I don't think I've, over the years, I've done, you know, a lot of monochrome studies where I've added a little bit of blue. I don't recall ever doing that and then adding a little bit of purple. So there may be a good reason for that. We'll, we'll see how this goes. But um, good to try something different. So really what I've done so far with the grey, or the black, if you like, which is washed out into grey, is put down kind of a tonal map. And then I'm, I'm using that as a guide because it allows me to work quite quickly now with the purple because I've got a certain framework to, to work around and over. And in some places I can stray away from that framework if I want to. And in other places I can simply follow what I've done before. So we can create this kind of interesting overlay between the washes of tone and the line drawing that I'm putting on top now. And because it's quite a quick thing to do, uh, you know, it's there's, there's no pressure when you experiment like this. If it doesn't work out perfectly, then it's no problem, but you know, you or I always learn stuff from these little experiments and I often incorporate maybe not the entire technique but little elements of the technique into the more elaborate, more time consuming paintings that I do. It's very easy I find to 
get into a fixed habit of doing things a certain way. And, you know, there's, in many cases, there's nothing wrong with that. But it's it's good to take sort of a little bit of an artistic holiday, shall we say, and uh, just keep questioning yourself. Am I doing things the way I really want to be doing? Doing them or am I just doing them that way? Because that's the way I've always done them. I feel the need to introduce a little bit of blue into the situation to just introduce some dark, even darker tones than we've got. And now, having worked with the watercolour marker, three different colours, we've used purple quite a lot, so I thought I'd come in with the acrylic paint and use a light yellow, the complementary colour to purple, to bring out some highlights and just make things pop a little bit more. And not going to go too heavy-handed with this, just very lightly drag the, the paint over the surface of the paper. I want to keep this feeling like a drawing for the most part. And again, just be just being selective with the parts that I highlight. And then finally, with a little round brush and some pure white, just a few finishing touches.
And I thought we were done, but I just think what I'll do is actually bring in a little bit touch of orange, actually, to uh, just warm things up a little bit. And yeah, we'll, I think we'll call this little experiment done. So I hope you've really enjoyed this short little video. I uh, hope it's encouraged you to kind of try some thing, you know, some new techniques, new materials. It's always really good fun to do that. Uh, keeps everything fresh. If you've got any questions, then you know the deal. Just leave a comment below the video and I'll be happy to, to answer if I can. Uh, if you enjoyed the video, please remember to hit that like button. And if you're new here, please remember to subscribe to the channel and hit the notifications bell. In the meantime, I hope to see you next Sunday for the next episode of The Sunday Art Show. Thanks very much for watching.